Okay, welcome back. Hmm, so we're working on spokes. Spokes, spokes, spokes. Um, yeah, we're gonna keep going on that. I notice I have this, um, you know, whatever this, the, the brace here, uh, the, you know, this brace, I guess. Um, I left that alone. Um, that's gonna be done after the spokes. So I didn't forget that. It just it needs to be done that way. So when I get the spokes done, I can just do that and then it's done. If not, if I do all this, then, then I gotta, you know, kind of mess around with it. So, all right. And what's also beautiful about this now is I fixed, I don't know if you guys noticed on the last couple videos, um, the camera was attached to the uh, Vision Air setup that I have. So if I were to shake this bench like this and then let go, the whole thing would still be shaking. So um, hopefully you didn't notice in the, in the, in the past videos, but uh, I've corrected that. So now if I shake this around, the camera doesn't move. So behind the scenes stuff. All right, so just getting on to it. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna keep going with um, kind of laying out these spokes um trying to figure out where they are you know what what can be seen and what can't be seen so uh let's see this dark one i got that one this is easily the hardest part trying to figure all this out <laughs> all right i got one right here on top that i that i don't have ready yet so put a little bit of white um, i haven't tinted these yet too they're a lot brighter than they're going to be in the end but that it's gonna work so all right so put out a little bit of um white on the palette um grab a brush here all right so tilt it this way because it's easier for my hand to move across this way so if I had to like do this line and I had to go up and down, that's more of an awkward movement for me. This way is much more comfortable. So I'll always tilt the canvas to, uh, to do that. What I'm also going to do is instead of using brilliant white, I may tint this a bit. Give myself a running start at this so I don't have to, you know, you know what? I take that back. I've already done these in white. If I do the next one in kind of a tinted yellow and then I try to tint these later, uh, they'll look different. So I want them to all look the same. So I'll, I'll stick with just doing it the same way. So a little bit of white here. <clears throat> it's um, a little bit more reduced than I would normally in a brush. So it's not going to be as opaque, but I want it to flow so I get a nice smooth line. So I'm not really concerned about opacity, really. Uh, I am, but uh, but getting that that line to flow smoothly is more important. I like that, that's better. Now, of course, you know this bike has been through a lot, so if these spokes are a little bit wonky it's totally fine because they literally are messed up you know they they've just they've seen what 120 or um, over 100 years so uh that's a good one i got that one this one i've got there the one that goes behind and i'll do the any over unders you know shadow and everything after i just want to kind of get the rest of these in all right so a couple dark ones in the back that i I want to grab so I'm mixing up some just uh, black with um, just black with burnt umber same color that I used for all this stuff so there is one that goes actually I'm gonna do these cross over but I'm gonna try to I'll cross them over manually this one yeah there's another crossover there okay I actually should have gone behind, but that's I'll fix that after. Let's just see another one just about here. Get that in there. And there's another one here. Oh no, not quite. Crap. It's more like that. That was a little thick, it kind of got 
goopy there. I'll get you guys closer. So it kind of got a little bit goopy right there, but that's okay. We'll fix it. See what else I'm missing. I don't think I'm missing much, although I got that. Got that. The spoke is a little bit thinner than I have it, so I'll fix that right now. Got that. That's that I can fix. That I can fix. Oh, the rest of this brace comes through here. So this is this is it. So this is the nitpicky type of stuff that. Um, but we'll also pull it together too. You know, it's it's really you know why this is taking as long as it is just because there's a lot of this. But again, that's what's really making it work. What's going on there? That's dark. I just missed it. So there's also something while I'm kind of picking at this. There's also something they're going to do with this painting that I've never done with any of the other paintings too. Um, and in the past, I've used the um, UVLS as a kind of an intercoat, you know, something to protect. See how the edge is kind of banged up here? Um, that's just because the clay board is, is on the edge right there. So as I even rub against it, that hard edge right there will allow it to, um, you know, will we'll just allow it to uh, scratch off really easily. So there's not much you can do with that. Um, but um, but what you can do, and I've, I did a little bit with the background on this one, is you can spray. Uh, I want to try using the uh, the Autoborn sealer, just the the clear sealer, uh, and see if that helps with that a little bit. It it works as kind of a a barrier coat, like a protection coat for the painting. Um, I don't want to get into using too much of it though. Um, you know, it's because you build anything up, it's not good. But um, but if there's an instance like this edge that's always getting, you know, kind of whacked, it'd be nice to be able to just, when I'm done with it, spray this whole thing, like this corner, and know that, you know, even if I scuff up against that, <clears throat> it's not going to, it's not going to damage. I swear I spend, you know, the last two hours of every painting fixing all the little nicks and bangs that happen over the course of its life being painted. All right, I think I've got all of them. Yes, I do. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix those couple little minor things like that blobby spoke right there. So that's just a matter of mixing up a little bit of gray that looks like the background. Again, it's doesn't have to be super perfect because I'm really just putting a teeny, teeny, tiny bit on there. So just a little bit of black and white till I get roughly close. This is fairly dry. And then what I can do, like I said, it's just like it's you know most of this micro tiny painting is subtractive. You know, it's it's painting around the object that you that you want in order to make that make that 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 item that image. So this spoke, I mean, I could continue, continue to make this spoke thinner and thinner until it's like, like a hair, you know, and that's much easier to do it that way than to get a perfectly hairline with the paintbrush or the airbrush. It's much easier to go in around it and kind of correct whatever is going sideways with it. All right, that is good. I thought there was something else too. Well, this one wasn't really done well. This should be done too. Add another coat to that. Here we go. I like it. I like it. Okay. Good. All right, so now I can start tinting these. So there's a couple ways to do this. So there's a really nice shadow on this long spoke here and on these two. So I'm going to do those with the airbrush. But first thing I'm going to do is get any of the over-unders. So where a spoke goes underneath one and there's a harder shadow, I want to get that with the paintbrush. And then I'll do the shading with the uh, airbrush. So I'm going to mix a little bit darker gray. So I'll use that same gray that I have on the palette, but I'll just add a little bit of black to it. So it's now, you know, it's a little bit darker. And I'm going to run through this thing and see if there are any, like where, like see this spoke here passes under 
this spoke. So I'm going to add that shadow in. And the same thing on the upper side of it. You can see, you know, that kind of thing going on. So that's nice because that now puts this spoke above this spoke. Can't do that with the airbrush easily. This is all, well, it should be a little bit lighter here. I don't know why I did that one so dark. So I take a little bit of lighter gray. <clears throat> this is too light. And I'm going to pop out this spoke a little bit, just where it's in front of the fender, you can see it. Add a little bit of a highlight to that. I can adjust these with the airbrush, you'll see that, but uh, this will give that a little bit of a little, little bit of a bump. Did I miss that spoke? Nope, I did not. There it is. That's good. That's got the highlights on it that it needs. All right, over-unders over here. I know it sounds like I'm sports betting with my over-unders. Um, these spokes here look like this. All right, I've got that one already. That goes over this one. <clears throat> this one goes over that one. I got that. Those are all good. I'm better shape than I thought. <clears throat> all right, so now for tinting these things. Tinting with in this area right here is really easy because I've got the brown already there. Tinting these here with the background gonna, are going to take a little bit of extra, extra, <laughs> a little bit of extra, extra. So what I need for that are a couple straight edges. Actually, let me, we need Blumber for this. And of course, Blumber is burnt umber and uh, black mixed into it. It is here somewhere. I mixed it into an old Createx bottle. I think a black. So the only problem with that is it looks like all the other ones now. It doesn't stand out, so I gotta dig for it. What do I do with it? I can always mix more of it, but I had it mixed up just for this. Oh, I got it. So yeah, so it was oh no, it was reducer originally. It was forty eleven, little bottle forty or eleven, so I did that. But that's all it is. It's um burnt umber with black in it. It's like a really, really warm black. <clears throat> Interesting. All right, this brush hasn't been used yet today, so. And if you watch the Tech Tuesdays, um, I learned a great trick from, uh, I believe it was Philippe Soltero. Uh, and I made a Tech Tuesday about it because I was, uh, you know, I'd been airbrushing for a while and never even thought of this. But at the end of the night, he uh, puts a little bit of water in all his gravity feed airbrushes and leaves the water in there. And what that does, if you watch the Tech Tuesday, you'll get a full explanation of it, but it um, it keeps the airbrush from, you know, residual paint from locking up in the brush overnight. Because even if there's a tiny, tiny bit of paint in the brush, it's gonna, um, it's gonna dry, and it's gonna kind of glue the airbrush together for a little bit. So if you leave water in it, it doesn't let that, that paint dry and just flush it out and you're ready to go the next day. It was actually brilliant. And again, I was, I've been airbrushing for a while and I've, you know, never occurred to me to do that, you know. Now, obviously, if you're not using your airbrush for a while, you can't do that because the water will just evaporate and you'll just have the same issue. That's not going to hurt the brush, but um, doesn't, you know, doesn't do the same thing. All right, now we're working. Okay, so I'm going to get a little bit of this. There's my color. I think this is, you know, it looks like it's pre-reduced too. This is an older bottle of this, and I didn't mark on it what I did to it, which is usually what I do. So if I have a pre-mixed color, let's see if I can find one here. Yeah. So this is um, Wicked Opaque Slate Black, which is green shade. So what this is, it's like a greenish slate black. And to make it, I used Opaque Black, uh, Opaque Thalo Blue, and I reduced it two to one. So, um, or yeah. So oh, I'm sorry, no, it's two parts black to blue, but because I didn't write anything on this, this is 100%. Let's see if I have one that's actually reduced. Yeah, this one here. 
So this one here is uh, auto born sealer, auto born sealer white, but it's reduced 10%. So that way I know what's in there. I didn't write it on the blumber bottle, which is interesting, but I know it's reduced because I can feel it. All right. I know so much to do. <laughs> All right, so this spoke here pops out onto the fender a little bit. That's the mistake that I can fix after. So what I want to do is I want to kind of shade the, the tops of these spokes. So I'm going to turn this upside down. And I'm going to move you guys because now you can't see what I'm doing. Yeah, let's move you there-ish. Okay. All right. So I need to find a stencil that will match the, the edge of this uh, this guy here. I don't know if I have a small one that'll work. Probably. Yeah, this one will work. See, the other thing I want to be careful of is this upright too. Even though I haven't done this yet, the fork, um, I, I don't want to get you know a ton of overspray on it. <clears throat> Let's use a jumbo magnet for this because we're going to hold two templates down. So I want to have a template for this, the fork too. So I need a straight edge for that. Let's see what else I got here. Of course there's a good one here. This is the nail template, Nail Master from Medea. So this is a fingernail template, but look at all the cool edges and shapes it has in it, curves, and it's, it's small. It's, you know, probably the size of an index card. So, you know, so uh, the moral of that story is when you're looking at templates, looking for templates, don't limit your looking to just the type of painting that you do. Um, there are so many of these that are so cool that you'd never notice, you know, because, like I said, you wouldn't be thinking to look for the airbrush or the fingernail section for this template or for a template that you could use, but... They are very cool. I collect, I've collected a lot of these um, fingernail templates. They're, they're really, really great. All right, so now I've got everything blocked off and all I wanna do, I wanna be real careful not to get out here onto the background because I don't wanna shade the background. I just wanna shade the, the spokes that are, have, have the background of the, um, the fender. I wanna keep an eye on the reference too. So it's almost, Invisible. I mean, they are so dark at the top, which is nice. But you can really kind of see them as they get down a little bit farther. So I'm really just going to kind of concentrate in this corner area. There we go. That looks good. So now these other spokes that have you know, that are out, of, out on the background, what I got to do is I got to mask the background. So in order to do that, I'll still use the same template. I, if this didn't have a, like this is for a starburst. So you spray this, you spray white, you know, a dot, you line this up and then you spray this and it looks like a star. If this just had a, just a single slit, I could use it. Or, eh, no, it would have to be reversed, sorry. So I'm gonna have to block off the background. So let me start with this one since I have the straight edge here. So I line this one up here like that and go grab another template with a straight edge. Let's use what do we got? I don't want to grab a big template. You know the big templates have great straight edges on them too. Uh, I'll use Scott McKay's. This is one of Scott's, I know I gotta clean this, but this is one of Scott McKay's pocket graphics. This is the shatter one, but this is all straight edges, which is nice. So I'm going to use this to line this way. Kind of. So now what's left is, I'll put a big magnet here. So now all that's left is the, is the spoke. So now what I can do is just shade that one spoke. Got to keep an eye on this one because this one isn't as dark as the other one. It just has a little bit of a fade on the top. But there you go. So that will now that and that fade it, that fade right there is tough to do with a with a paintbrush. Even though it's small, it'll still you know it'll still kind of I don't know. It won't look the same if I if I paintbrush that. 
uh, for me. Now, I know there are people who are, who are really skilled with a paintbrush and can pull that off. Um, you know, but for me, with dealing with acrylic paints and all that fun stuff, it's just so much smoother. And I just love the way that it all looks when it's, you know, you have that airbrush fade on that. It's really the what the airbrush does very, very well. So do the same thing with this guy here. It's got a little bit of a bright... Be careful not to scratch the painting with the magnets. Let's get right in. I gotta block off the fender, but I'll do that with my finger. A little bit on this one. Let's see how that looks. Perfecto. Good. That leaves a highlight there, so that's good figure out what's going on with this one. There's a shadow on this one too. I think I can flip it over now. I think I've done enough of that that it looks good. Yeah, see how those spokes now go right underneath the fender? They just tuck right in. That's that's exactly what we're looking for. Ah, uh, that spoke, I got that. That's fine. Uh, oh, this one here. I missed this one. So block. Oh, that's not enough. It needs this. So I do have some overspray on the fork. It's again, it's not a huge deal because I'm going to be painting that whole thing and there's all kinds of texture on that. But again, I just don't want a ton on there. I don't want to have to spend the next hour fighting all the extra paint I have on there. So that one is good. That one does not fade. That one's got a shadow on it, which I should get now. So a little, see that shadow on the drum right there. So that's also on the spoke. So that I can just drop in like this. Uh, that's good. That's good. Now for these over here, it's the same kind of deal. The other side of the fork is right here. So I can just kind of fade that in. That's fine. This little guy right here is too bright. Um, I don't want to get overspray on that. I don't mind getting overspray on the bottom again because it's brown underneath it. But I'm just going to... Hit this really lightly to tone that down a little bit. That's that's much better. Alrighty. That looks good. Alright. So there is corrosion on these spokes too. Um, it's whatever metal they're made out of. Um, they, they've turned kind of a yellowish. So again, I'm going to go to my go-to yellow, which is Detail Yellow Ochre, which is 0063. Um, it's funny, people used to ask all the time, you know, when I was doing the, all these paintings with the Wicked colors, because there are two lines, basically. In the Wicked line, there is a, there is a detail line, this one here, and there is the regular Wicked. Find a bottle here. Come on now. <laughs> Every single one I'm grabbing is not, this is a regular one. So this it just says Wicked Red Oxide on it. So there's a the regular line. I call it the regular line, but it's you know just just the the standard colors. And then there's a detail line, which is finer ground pigment and different colors and everything. I use these lines absolutely 100% interchangeably. I don't know the difference between the two. I mean, in the way that they spray, there might be a difference, but they both perform amazingly. They're they're really just you know I just choose them for the colors. So. Um, so again, I know the detail line has uh, finer ground pigments in it, so it, it tends to work better with uh, detail-oriented brushes. But honestly, like I said, I mean, I use the Wicked line, the new opaque line, and the detail colors all interchangeably. I couldn't tell you, like, until I knew yellow ochre was a detail color, but I could not have told you that carmine, for instance, is a detail color. I, I didn't know that. I mean, you know, I never look because it doesn't matter. To me, anyway. All right. So anyway, that's my wicked rundown, <laughs> I guess. All right. Let me um, move these templates out of here. A little bit of rum. Grab my paintbrush. All right. So I've got yellow ochre on here. So this is the, the tint that I'm going to kind of hit these with. <clears throat> but before I do that, there is some shading on some of these spokes that I want to get. Um, these two in particular, these two that are really bright in the front here, they've got a tiny little like rolled over shadow on them. So I want to try to get that. 
So it's going to be a little bit of surgery here to get this done because it's very, it's very thin. So hopefully you saw that. I know the camera's trying to focus. It's doing its best here. Let's we'll see if that locks it in. What I should do is for the next one, I'll hit the manual focus so that it won't move. Now this drop shadow, not drop shadow, this shadow on this spoke, I'm actually gonna use to help clean this spoke up too. Cause this one got a little bit wide here where the shadow is. So that actually works out really well. So I can add that shadow in there and that also cleans up that spoke. All right, so the shadows are done. So now I just hit the, um, the yellowing and the way that's done is um, it's the yellow ochre, detail yellow ochre and a lot of reducer. So it, I'm making kind of a wash for this color. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of randomly start to put that in. I think I wanna add a little bit of black to it. because it's even super hyper reduced. This yellow ochre is really brilliant. Um, when I airbrush with this stuff, it, it looks like, you know, just yellow. It looks, well, that's yellow ochre right there. So you can see it. <clears throat> it does not look like what it looks like in the bottle when you spray it. Um, and it, again, that's why it's kind of my go-to um, yellow. It's just a great color. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm just kind of skipping along these spokes with this yellow to kind of give it that random type of pitted look. And it's really just the white ones. And now you can see why I didn't want to, when I introduced that other one, when I started the, the, you know, finishing up the spokes, if I did, if I tinted it yellow to start, it would, you could see now how it would look completely different than the others. And, uh, and that's one of the big traps with these long paintings. When you start and stop, you don't always, I don't always tend to remember what I did. So, um, so that'll show if you use a different technique to get another part of the painting done that should look the same. So again, it's, it's, the, it's the reason to kind of do all of one section at, you know, all of one type of area at, at the same time, like all the spokes, for instance. All right, so that is looking good. I may even want to adjust that after, but, uh, but I'm feeling pretty good about that. I don't want to go too much with this yellow because it'll... You know, the spokes will look yellow, and I don't want that. I just want to give it that just hint of whatever oxidation is going on there. <clears throat> All right, a couple other, got about two minutes left, which is perfect. So I'm going to grab a little bit of white and pop out some of the, it's too thick, uh, pop out some of those highlights that should be there, like for whatever reason the angle of this spoke it just it's brilliant it really lights up so we're gonna drop that one back in and there's a little bit of a highlight on the top of this spoke before it disappears underneath the the brace and I think that's good I think that's really good all right we go clean that out now I'll just back you guys out so you can see the whole thing yeah maybe um you know like i said i'll, I'll probably work on the manual work with manual focus on, on the next one just so the camera doesn't have to really try to keep up with it but that's where we're at right now so we got you know we got all the spokes done and it's looking really good so um for the next episode for episode 21 um we're going to work on this strut or this brace uh, and that'll finish up the wheel, except for the, and we start working on the fork from there. Um, or maybe not. Maybe, um, you know, since I've got all this now, the technique down for the rust, maybe I'll work on the, the, you know, the tank or something. We'll see what happens. More than likely, though, we'll go on to the strut to kind of crawl across this whole painting. All right. So you guys know the drill. If you are enjoying this, thank you very much for hanging out with me. Uh, please like and subscribe if you haven't. Uh, these drop every Wednesday um, anyway, Wednesday mornings. So you don't need a notification for that. But it, it's nice to have the notifications for the random stuff. So click that bell icon too. And um, we will uh, get right back at this one next week. So for Steve Leahy and Open Studio, 
I will catch you guys on the next one.